it's been a while ladies and gentlemen it has been a little bit of time yes guys welcome back to the george benson football channel welcome to six things we've learned i've been thinking i've been sat here in this very home behind me which is now my home for the foreseeable future because if you've been living under a rock or probably the best place for you to be to be honest the coronavirus it's a real thing it's a serious thing to take away from the high energy start just for one second it is important that we stay at home right now right now ironically i'm not in my home i'm in the garden of my home which is actually all right as well to be fair we've got a nice blue swimming pool reminds me of the chels i spend a bit of time in here on a daily basis reading books drinking coffee and thinking what can i do for the george benson football channel which by the way i just want to let you all know that i'd be very grateful in this time of need if you could hit the like button on the video subscribe to the george benson football channel if you haven't already because the great news in all of this chaos in the world is that when football is back not only are we not going to take for granted going to Stamford Bridge and meeting up at the pub for a pint before the game or after the game or all of these things it's gonna feel like the world is back it's gonna feel like my life is back when Chelsea come back but there's still a little bit of uncertainty regarding what's going to happen with the Premier League season. I'm not here to break any news because I'm not that guy. I'm just the one who reacts to the news. I don't make the decisions. There is still a possibility that the Premier League season may well be voided. There's also a possibility that transfer windows will be open until January, which is something ludicrous that I've heard. There's also a story that it's going to be like a university campus kind of thing. All of the teams are going to be on it, quarantined themselves. All the matches are going to be broadcast live and like they'll be playing games behind closed doors and there's a lot of different variations of possibilities right now and I don't want to sit here contemplating it whatsoever. I want to look at the six things that I've learned so far from a rounded perspective from Frank Lampard's first season as Chelsea manager. So the way that I've envisaged this happening, I'm going to do like a few different videos of six things we learned. We're going to go through the defence, we're going to go through the midfield, we're going to go through formations, we're going to go through what's good, what isn't good about what we've seen so far this season. But today, for video number one, in this mini roundup six things we learned series we're going to take a look at the overall perspective we're going to take a look at different positions we're going to take a look at frank we're going to take a look at different formations and whether or not chelsea have achieved what it was that we set out to achieve at the beginning of this season which was to put ourselves in a position to build something that could be fantastic in the future. So, starting with box number one, you can see it's a little bit yellow. If you're new to this series, yellow means it's something that isn't great, it's not ideal, it's something that can be worked on, or it's something that I believe can be worked on. Red is just nada. We don't want it, we don't want to see it ever again. And green is good. So as you can see, it's a pretty positive video this one today, which in this current day and age, we need a little bit of positivity in our lives. Speaking of which, Cappuccino. I'm a big fan. Box number one, Kepa. Now, a lot of people would give Kepa a red box for his performances so far this season. Chelsea have conceded a lot of goals. We spent £72 million, a world record fee for a goalkeeper, yet he's not really been performing at any kind of world-class, world record fee so far this season. It's not been the best season for Kepa. There's a lot of talk right now about Chelsea being interested in Manuel Neuer. Not going to entertain any of that. I think it's absolute nonsense. Chelsea potentially interested in Onana, the Ajax goalkeeper, the man that came to Stamford Bridge and even though he conceded four goals, was one of the best players on the pitch in that game. He kept Ajax in it and we probably would have won about 8-4. We've also got Hakim Ziyech who's on his way and apparently they're very good friends and people talk and these day and age, you know, people probably WhatsApp each other, call each other on the telephone, FaceTime saying, you know what? It'd be good if you join me at Stamford Bridge if they come in for a bid. Onana's one that I could definitely see happening, but Kepa, in terms of should we sell him? Should we keep him? I'm going to go into a lot more detail about Chelsea's options. For some reason, the flipping penguin heater over there has decided to start talking. Can you shut your gob? Should we keep him? Should we sell him? Personally, I would give Kepa some more time. What we've seen in the last couple of performances, the games against Liverpool, the game against Everton, I know it's just a couple of matches, two clean sheets, he took the time off. Well, he didn't really take the time off, he was given the time off by Frank Lampard bringing in Willy Caballero, who I think has done a decent enough job as a backup goalkeeper. Kepa's obviously the main one that we're here to talk about. I do feel like Kepa has got a lot more to give. I think in terms of growing into his potential, we know that goalkeepers often peak within their careers at a later date than, say, defenders, 
midfielders or attackers, goalkeepers can play for a lot longer. So considering we spent so much money on him, there is rumours as well that maybe Oblak could be someone that Chelsea might be looking at with a potential swap deal, seeing Kepa go the other way. There's a lot of options, but I do feel as though we need to give Kepa more time. It's the reason I've given him a yellow box. I think it would be a little bit too negative of me towards the future if I was to give Kepa just a red box. He's not had the best season. His save percentage has not been high enough. I don't think he's been a leader at the back for Chelsea as well. We might get onto this a little bit later, but the defence hasn't always been at its very best either. So Kepa gets a yellow box. We move into box number two, and I'm going to focus on the midfield. There's been breakthrough seasons this season for a couple of our midfielders. Mason Mount is the main one. Even flipping Lionel Messi has come out recently saying that Mason Mount is going to be one of the best players in the world in the future. Now, I don't know about you, but I've watched a lot of football in my lifetime, and Lionel Messi may well just be the best player that I've ever seen. I've seen him play live a couple of times. He's got a hat trick when I went to see him when Barcelona played Athletic Bilbao. So Mason Mount's had a breakthrough season. Billy Gilmore has broken into the scene. I don't want to focus on him too much because we're going to go into individual players in another video, particularly this midfield. You've got Ruben Loftus-Cheek to come back into things as well, which is another positive to look forward to in Chelsea's midfield. Kovacic has been the best player for us this season. He's been our best player of the season for many different reasons, be it dribbling, be it tackling, be it levels of improvement. I've just had a message from somebody. Jorginho. Assistant captain. I think he's had a relatively good season. There's been peaks and troughs. There's always been questions asked about Jorginho. People have seen Billy Gilmore come in recently and they're thinking, do we really need Jorginho? Could we cash in on him now? Because Billy Gilmore's going to be the future of the Chelsea midfield alongside Mateo Kovacic. We've had N'Golo Kante, who's had some big moments this season. Not necessarily his best season. I think it's probably his worst season so far at Chelsea. But he's had injuries. He played through injuries in the Europa League final last season. He's never really had a full chance to recover. And even though I've entertained the idea of Chelsea cashing in on N'Golo Kante on this channel. It's still something that I really don't want to see happen. If we're looking at somehow positives from this coronavirus situation, it gives people like N'Golo Kante, who's not had that much time to recover from a few recurring injuries, gives players like Kante the time to actually build upon that recovery so that when he does come back, we can see him back to his very, very best. Now, the midfield gets a green box. We move into box number three. It's a red for the defence. There's been a few good individuals individual moments this season from individual centre-backs, such as Vikayo Tomori's breakthrough into the scene. We saw him break into the team. We saw him, despite losing the game, he had a very good game against Mo Salah, showing his potential, showing his speed, showing his ability for standing tackles, sliding tackles. That beautiful goal that he scored away at Wolves, which I will never forget where I was during that moment with the sun shining down on my face at the Molyneux, a bit like it has been here in Bali. Hence the tan that we've got going on right now. Vikayo Tomori, big breakthrough season for him. People are talking about a potential signing from Lille, who we're not going to talk about today because I'm going to talk about it in another video, which would probably suggest if Chelsea are trying to make signings now for the future, I don't know how much of this speculation is true. I don't really want to entertain too much speculation during this current time because I know that sports writers, sports reporters, sports journalists, including myself, we're all looking for stories to, to get clicks at this point because we're all kind of out of jobs at this moment in time. So we're going to entertain that another day. But if Chelsea are looking to bring in a brand new centre-half, maybe even a left-sided centre to half, which could leave questions about whether or not Tomori's in Frank Lampard's plans for the future. I think he certainly will be, but you could be looking at maybe Rudiger moving on, could be looking at Christensen maybe moving on, maybe even Zuma. There's a lot of uncertainty about that Chelsea back line, and it's not just uncertainty for the future, but it's also been uncertainty with Frank, where it's he doesn't really know game by game what his strongest centre-back pairing is. There's not been a pairing so far this season where, for a run of games, both centre-halves have been performing at the top level. There's always been one that's let us down, or maybe it's a mixture of Kepper and not being able to organise the defence and not having any stability with having similar players playing in front of him on any given week. So I've given the defence a red. I think there's questions about the left-back position. We've seen Alonso come in recently and do a good job. We've seen Emerson play there. We've seen Aspi play there since Reese James has moved over to right-back. There is positives with the defence. I think Azpilicueta's had a pretty solid season despite at times showing that he's not the player that he once was. But he is getting older. It's something we've got to come to expect. Reese James had a breakthrough season. Again, there's been times where we've seen naivety. There's been times where he's not necessarily been on the ball as much as we'd like him to. And we see little mistakes that you can only really come to expect from a player of that age. So I did have to give a red box in this video because it's not been the most perfect season. 
There's been plenty of positives that we're about to get into to wrap this video up with the next three boxes. I've given the defense a red. It's something that definitely needs to be addressed. If there is a position that we definitely need to strengthen, it is trying to build from the back again. Whether it's buying a new keeper, whether it's replacing Alonso or Emerson at left back and seeing Azpilicueta move into sort of more of like a secondary role in the playing personnel at the club. Let me know what you guys think it is for the defense in the comments down below. But we move into box number four and I want to give this guy the biggest shout out so far in this video for an individual player. We're going to go into midfielders. I've said that I think Kovacic has been our player of the season, but for Tammy Abraham to come in, his debut Premier League season at Chelsea, he's been given the role by Frank Lampard. He's given the number nine shirt, 19 goals in all competitions so far this season for Tammy. It's a brilliant return, and I think it's the sign of something that is only going to get better. Chelsea are going to be looking to strengthen the striker position. We know that. Olivier Giroud, unlikely to stay, but in recent weeks, before all of this hit the fan. Olivier Giroud came in and did a very good job. But Tammy gets a green box from me. I think he's had a brilliant first season as Chelsea's leading striker in the Premier League. He started very well. There's been moments where he has dipped in form, where maybe if he was still banging in the goals, Chelsea wouldn't be in a top four race. We'd have actually cemented our position in the top four if Tammy would have carried on going the way that he started the season. But he hit the ground running. And I think for a first season at Chelsea as the number nine, we couldn't really have asked for much more from Tammy. I'm starting to sweat prefer Profusely. So we're going to move on into box number five and I'm giving a green box to Frank Lampard. Last summer, I remember when Maurizio Sarri was sacked and he left the club and I remember being in Sweden thinking to myself, what is going to happen? at my football club. Chelsea are in turmoil. I've just started this channel where we win the Europa League and then all of a sudden, the manager merry-go-round continues. The one that we just want it to stop or we want it to just keep going. We don't want it to stop because we don't want to keep getting managers, throwing them off. Frank Lampard comes in, my childhood hero. Absolutely adore the man. I put this on Twitter. So I'm thinking to my little girls, my little girls are back home. And I told you Chelsea were the best team in the world. And tonight we are, get in there. How can we not love this man? It's Chelsea Super Frank. He's come in. We're in the top four. Yes, we're pretty much out of the Champions League, but no one's going to take that one away from us because the game hasn't been played. So I'm going to sit here and say, at the end of March, beginning of April, Chelsea are still in the Champions League. Super Frank has done an absolutely brilliant job. He's been very bold, and that's the word that I've put in the green box with the picture of him. Very bold with decisions. Very bold with the nature in which he's brought in so many young players in one go. It's something that, yes, we didn't have a transfer window, which in itself is another incredible feat from Frank. To have done so much with this team in such a short period of time, but above all else, and especially in moments like this now, where we've not had any football for like three or four weeks, we can sit here and reflect on what has genuinely been one of the most enjoyable fan experiences as a Chelsea fan that I can remember, particularly as a match-going fan. Like, there's so much love for the manager. It's not like last season where people were on the fence with Maurizio Sarri. Some loved him. Some hated him. There was conflict within the fan base, within the club, because we weren't sure on the style. We weren't sure on the direction we were going towards. Whereas with Frank... And the way that everything has come together this season, it's been such an enjoyable experience to be a Chelsea fan up until this point. Whether the season is void and we get Champions League again, which would be bloody brilliant, or whether it does carry on in whatever form, I cannot wait to be back in Stamford Bridge singing Super Frank's name, whether it's Frankie Lampard scores 200, whether it's we've got Super Frankie Lampard. So many new chants as well, which has been brilliant this season as well. So Frank Lampard gets box number five. Looking at it again, kind of expanding on what Frank's done, I think Chelsea have been very, very good this season with adaptability when it comes to tactics and formations. We've seen some things not work. We've seen some pretty heavy home defeats against teams that we shouldn't be getting beaten by because we looked null and void of ideas. We looked as though we couldn't kill teams off. We've missed a lot of chances. We give up a lot of chances and concede a lot of goals. But what I will say that we've definitely seen, which is extremely positive from Chelsea this season, is adaptability. And I think moving forward, we start to speculate about transfers. When we look at what's going to happen with this whole coronavirus thing and whether teams miss out on a load of revenue, which of course they will, will it affect Chelsea's transfer budget? I think we're in a very good position as a football club right now, better than a lot of teams, to still be able to go and make signings when the time is right. Looking at what we've got already, looking at the different options that Frank has already looked at from three at the back to four at the back to two in a pivot to a 4-3-3, whatever formation it may be, 
There's been times this season where we've seen so much potential from different Chelsea teams playing in different styles against different opposition. And I think the one thing that we can take moving forward, looking towards the future under Frank Lampard, when football eventually returns for us all on our screens and when we can all rock up at Stamford Bridge together again and give a good old cheers with a bottle of beer. So many things to look forward to with this Chelsea team. Young players that are only going to get better. I bring it back. Mason Mount, complimented by Lionel Messi. There are so many talented youngsters in this Chelsea team. Frank's a young manager. He's developing all the time. You bet your bottom dollar that he's not just sat at home every day like playing flipping Animal Crossing or calling up Jody Morris on FaceTime and being a little bit bizarre on his phone. Super Frank's going to be working on things. He's going to be thinking, watching videos back of performances this season. And we've got to remember... Ruben Loftus-Cheek is going to be fit when all of this is said and done. Callum Hudson-Odoi going to be fit when all of this is said and done. We spoke about N'Golo Kante. He's going to be fit as well when all of this is said and done. The future is incredibly bright for Chelsea. This has been the six things that I have learned so far this season as a whole. Overlooking everything, not really delving into things too much. I want this to be like a little mini-series here whilst we're all sat at home in quarantine, locked down during the... So let me know the six things that you think are the main ones in the comments down below. I'm going to delve into individual players. I'm going to delve into positions, midfielders, defenders, and everything in future Six Things We Learn videos over the next few days. I'm sorry I'm not as active as I have been. Like I said, I didn't want to jump into like every single report from a newspaper about, oh, Chelsea have been linked with this guy because he wore a blue t-shirt in his Instagram video. I don't want to get dragged into all of that stuff every day, but I do want to get back making content for you guys. We were absolutely flying, and then a flipping virus decided to just come and wipe us, wipe us clear of content for a while. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. Subscribe if you new around here as i said at the beginning of the video most people that watch these aren't even subscribed so make sure you do so have a great day i'll see you all later stay indoors stay safe my friends